Climate Media's Mining Weekly is interviewing Edward Stoke, the new Director of Research of the World Platinum Investment Council, which has just published its Platinum Quarterly for the third quarter of 2022. Ed, it's great to chat to you. Can you give us some insight into the latest Platinum Quarterly, please? So within the, the latest Platinum Quarterly, we um, take a look at the quarterly results for the Platinum Supply and Demand, the outlook for the rest of 2022, and most importantly, we present our first projections for 2023, and that's looking particularly interesting. So contrasting the two, we're seeing a surplus in 2022 of 804,000 ounces that moves to a meaningful deficit of 303,000 ounces in 2023. Now, the, the surplus in 2022 is largely the result of um, net disinvestment that um, reduces substantially going into next year and becomes net positive investment. But we also have demand growing by 19% into 2023 and supply growth of only 2%. Such strong demand growth in a recessionary environment may seem slightly counterintuitive, um, but it's important to remember that the main drivers are automotive demand and industrial demand. Now, automotive demand remains um, somewhat suppressed because of supply chain challenges, and it is below recessionary levels of consumer demand, whereas industrial demand is largely the result of capacity additions that have been substantially committed to. The other thing is that this deficit is coming after two years of surpluses. So one might question whether... The, uh, the surplus material from 2021 and 2022 will simply offset the deficit in 2023. We don't believe that will happen. And the main reason is that China has been buying significant amounts of, of, of platinum, um, sucking up all of the surpluses. Um, and, and the inventories that have accumulated in, in China are expected to be highly price sensitive. So much higher platinum prices are likely to be needed to unlock that platinum for the domestic market. And then the final point is really on green hydrogen. So platinum is a, is a key catalyst in the production and consumption of green hydrogen. Um, current demand for platinum from the green hydrogen economy is relatively small, but it is growing quickly. And, but it puts platinum in a pretty unique um, position as a, uh, as a commodity, having an emergent new end source of demand that is growing quickly um, is, is, not a, uh, is not a feature of, of many other commodities. The only one I can really think of in recent years is silver with the photovoltaic demand. So in, in summary, you know, platinum is looking extremely interesting next year, moving into a deficit, and we have this emergent source of new end demand as well, which, which could help support platinum demand growth going through into the rest of the decade. That's interesting, Ed, and you say supply is forecast to decline 10% in 22 and rise by just 2% in 2023. Can you tell Mining Weekly's viewers, listeners, and readers more about the reasons for this? Well, the decline in 2022 reflects two things. One, in 2021, supply was boosted by um, Anglo-American Platinum's unwinding of that ACP work in progress inventory. Um, and then turning to this year, we've also seen significant challenges in terms of um, power availability in South Africa um, that have hampered uh, the ability of, of the, the producers in South Africa to sustain output at levels that were planned at the beginning of the year. Now, looking into 2023, we do have a bit of an increase in, in supply, um, 2%, as you said, but uh, that, that assumes that there are still ongoing challenges with power availability in South Africa. Something that isn't taken into account in it is the risks to Russian supply. So as things stand at the moment, Russian supply is expected to remain flat year on year, but Nor Nickel, which is the, um, the principal producer of, of platinum and palladium in Russia, has cautioned publicly that it is struggling with the impacts of sanctions, which are, which are limiting its ability to procure mining equipment and to procure spares for the mining equipment that it already has. So it is quite possible that uh, Nor Nickel may struggle to sustain at historical levels going into next year and beyond. And uh, you mentioned automotive demand, and that's growing at a steady rate this year. And it's poised to do the same next year, but the brakes are still on to some extent. Why is that? So it really comes down to the supply chain challenges that the automotive industry has been um, subjected to over the last couple of years. And um, this is principally the semiconductor shortage, which has limited the ability of the automakers to sustain output at, at, at planned levels. Now, the, the supply chain challenges are expected to ease. They, they've started to ease, and that is expected to continue into 2023. Um, but the, uh, the automotive production numbers are still a long way below what was expected pre-COVID. So we're probably talking you know, around five to seven million vehicles below 
um, those pre-COVID projections. Um, the other thing, of course, is that we're seeing increasing penetration from, from battery technologies, and, and so therefore fewer pure ICE vehicles being produced. But on the other hand, partially offsetting that, um, the, there are more hybrid vehicles that are being produced. So that's a combination of the internal combustion engine and um, you know, some element of battery electrification. And for platinum demand, hybrid vehicles actually can have a pretty big impact. They typically contain more PGMs than a plain ICE vehicle, and that's because there's much greater thermal cycling. And so the, the, the exhaust treatment system has to be able to manage reducing the emissions even at much lower exhaust system temperatures. So you know, there are a number of factors there. I think the demand for platinum from the automotive industry should be set to continue to grow going forwards. And that is a part of, partially driven by that increased um, production of, of hybrid vehicles, but it's also higher platinum for palladium substitution in gasoline vehicles. So if we look back at the last decade, there was a, a lot of effort to remove platinum and substitute in palladium, and that was on um, you know, price sensitive uh, factors when palladium was trading below platinum. That situation is now, now reversed, and automakers have been um, looking to substitute platinum in for palladium um, in order to uh, try and reduce their costs effectively. And you speak of industrial demand being set to expand 10% in 2023, reaching the second highest demand levels on record. What is driving this industrial demand? So there's a couple of factors, um, but but the, the main one really is capacity additions um, and predominantly in the glass and chemical space. So the, the industrial demand can, can go up and down quite significantly, and that's because the, the greatest moment of demand for an industrial facility is when it's first established and you're, you're loading that facility with the platinum that you need to produce the products um, that, that you're uh, trying to manufacture. The ongoing platinum demand requirements thereafter are typically quite small. So it's really just replacing any losses that, that have occurred through the system. Um, as it happens for next year, there are just quite a lot of capacity additions in, in as I said, the glass and chemical space. Um, and those capacity additions are, are really committed to already. So and in most cases, you know, substantially complete from a, from a construction perspective. So that, that incredibly strong um, industrial demand outlook for 2023 is, is, is one that's kind of locked in already. I mean, the only area I'd caution on is if we do see a particularly deep recession, um, then which, which is perhaps looking a little bit less likely now, um, then the risk to demand from the industrial space would be uh, more in 2024 and beyond. And the tide is changing for investment demand, going from net disinvestment in 2022 to net investment in 2023. Why is this? And are we starting to see the appeal of green hydrogen becoming more apparent to investors? Thank you. So on the investment side of things, um, it's really the disinvestment over the last 18 months or so has to a large extent been a product of, of two things. Firstly, rising interest rates. So for uh, holders of ETFs that are asset class agnostic, they are paying the ETF issuer to manage that position, typically around 0.5%. And the cash equivalent of that investment is not attracting any, any interest. Um, so effectively, they're paying, they're paying for their exposure to platinum. But with interest rates going up, it's, it's more um, cost effective for them to switch from holding an ETF into a futures position and, and then deposit the cash and receive interest on that. Added to that, platinum has been in backwardation since the middle of 2021. So that means that a holder of a futures position is effectively being, being paid to hold that speculative position. So that, that's, that's a large part of the ETF disinvestment that we have seen um, over the last 18 months or so. And we expect the, the pace of that to begin to slow going forwards. So effectively, the residual investors of e holders of ETFs are more likely to hold on to their positions. Um, perhaps they, they're not as asset class agnostic as the ones that have disinvested so far. Um, and maybe their investment mandates mean that they, they, they're restricted to holding ETFs. Um, but also for um, yeah, some investors looking at the platinum market swinging into a deficit in 2023, that's quite an attractive outlook potentially, and, and that may encourage them to hold on to their positions. The other significant source of investment um, outflows has been from exchange stocks. So these are inventories held as collateral for positions on um, the NYMEX and, and TOCOM um, futures exchanges. Now, we've seen very high lease rates for platinum over the last 18 months, and that reflects a tight physical market, largely because of China's significant imports. 
The, the, um, the principle here, though, is that with, with a very high lease rate, owners of the inventories on those exchanges are incentivized to move the material out of the exchange stocks and then either to lease it out or sell it into the tight um, physical market. And so that's attracted a significant amount of material away from the exchange stocks. Now, to put ETFs and exchange stocks together in context, over 1.2 million ounces of um, ETFs and exchange stocks have been um, disinvested over the, over the past 18 months. So that's a significant driving force behind the surpluses we reported for 2021 and 2022. Turning to green hydrogen, um, look, I think the outlook for green hydrogen is really exciting. It's going to play a key component in terms of trying to decarbonize the world and meet the, the target set in the Paris Accord. Um, we've run some numbers on it. And um, if, if uh, all of the plans come to fruition as they, as they're currently projected to, we could be looking at somewhere around 10% of global decarbonisation efforts could be met with green hydrogen. So really, really important and um, you know, potentially over time a, a significant end source of platinum demand. Very interesting. And the latest World Platinum Investment Council Platinum Quarterly mentions imports into China totaling 1.2 million ounces of platinum which are far in excess of identified demand. How does this affect the overall picture for platinum? So the 1.2 million ounces is, 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 the, is the number that's um, excess of identified demand in China. Um, total imports have, have been significantly more than that. We think there are three reasons behind um, those excess imports. The first is that Chinese end users of platinum have been quite aware that the platinum market was likely to enter a deficit um, at some point in the future. And so they may well have been building buffer inventories to protect themselves against the possibility of either supply shortfalls um, or significant price increases. And then secondly, whilst building those buffer inventories, they may well have thought um, about taking, well, if it, they may well have taken the position that if the market is going to be entering a period of tightness, why not build up their, those, those inventories even further um, on, on a quasi speculative basis, expecting price increases that they could then benefit from if they, then sold that material into the open market in China. And then the third reason is that um, real end use of platinum may in fact have been somewhat higher than we can currently identify. So at present, it's, it's still pretty difficult to get into China. Um, and as a result, uh, the data discovery process can be somewhat challenging. Um, and be, having a high degree of certainty that loadings on heavy duty vehicles, for example, are as projected is quite difficult. And it's certainly interesting to note that when you look at the timing between the big kick up in uh, excess imports into China um, and then the introduction of China six emissions regulations, they said typically they, they happened at basically around the same time. So it's certainly possible that, that part of the excess imports may be true consumption um, and not, not, not inventory building. And Ed, what in your view should be the biggest takeaway from the latest platinum quarterly of the World Platinum Investment Council? I think the biggest takeaway really should be that the market is moving into a meaningful deficit and that the availability of above ground inventory is, is severely restricted um, and unlikely to offset that deficit in the rest of the world ex China. And within China, it's only likely to be um, to be offset if we see significantly higher price platinum prices than, than um, we have today, um, which would then attract that inventory back into the market. So a meaningful deficit in 2023. That was Creamer Media's Mining Weekly speaking to Edward Stirk, the new director of research of the World Platinum Investment Council.